Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little. I'm here today with episode 266 of Weekly Poker Hand. This is the last hand I have that I want to review from this Sunday million by, uh, deep run that one of our PokerCoaching.com members made. And after this, I think we're going to go back to some live cash game footage. So, some of you will like that and some of you won't. But that's okay because we will keep jumping back and forth and make a little something for everybody. So here we're playing 3600 with a 22,000 stack. So that is, um, what, 30, 35 big blinds. Folds around to a relatively tight-ish player. He's playing only 10% of hands, uh, raising with 10% of hands, and he's playing 15% of hands total. So those are pretty tight stacks. In the hijack seat, who makes it 1,200, a min raise at 300, 600. And Hero has ace, three of hearts in the big blind. I think this is a very, very easy call. Um, Hero's hand is great. He's getting amazing pot odds. And you have to realize right here, the way you want to think about should I defend the big blind is you want to ask how much equity do I have against my opponent's range and then how much equity will I realize? So let's say right here, let's presume we have 40% equity. Okay, let's just make a guess. If we were to be all in here, which we're not, but if we had one big blind more, we're probably going to win about 40% of the time. So then how much of our equity are we going to realize given we will end up folding out the best hand sometimes after the flop. Like say it comes 9-8-4 and our opponent bets with king-queen, well, they just made us fold out the best hand, right? So we're not going to realize all of our equity, but with the suited ace, you actually realize a pretty good amount of it. But let's say we're going to realize, let's pretend even a bad scenario, we're going to realize only 75% of our equity, okay? So let's say we're going to win 40%, we multiply that by 0.75, and that is 30% total, right? And based on our 4.6 to 1 pot odds, we only need to win 18% of the time. So we're going to win, we're going to realize our equity 30% of the time, and we only need to realize it 18% of the time. So we have a nice overlay here. If we had a hand like 9-4 offsuit, though, now we're going to have more like 33% equity against our opponent's range. And we may realize only 60% of that equity. So 33% times 0.6, I don't even know what that is. It's not a lot. It's going to be something very close to 20%, right? And you see, 20% starts to become much, much closer uh, to the 18% that we require. So you probably want to be shying away from those scenarios because you're going to be out of position. You would rather decrease variance, um, especially whenever you're usually just going to flop a hand that's or have a hand that's total garbage. That said, as the opponent's range gets wider and wider, like let's say the cut uh, cut off or the button raises, and you know they're pretty loose when it comes to raising. That's when you can start defending literally any two cards as long as there's an ante in play. And I know now most tournaments are doing the big blind ante, even from the very start of the tournament, which should lead to you defending your big blind very, very, very often when you're facing a min raise. Now, when your opponent's raise bigger, then you're going to be getting worse odds, which should lead you to go back to not defending the 9-4 offsuit ever. <laughs> so anyway, ace three suit is an easy call. Flop comes 10-7 threes. Two hearts. 10 and 7 are hearts, obviously. So hero has... Bottom pair and the nut flush draw. This is a fantastic hand. Um, hero should definitely check the flop. If the opponent bets, what would you do? Well, I think it's very often going to be either a call or a raise, obviously. I typically would lean towards calling with the ace high with a pair because it's always nice first to have some flushes in your check calling range whenever you do get another heart. If you check raise all of your hearts on the flop, well, think about what that does to your range when you check call. When you check call, it means you don't have any flush draws, which means if a flush comes, or the heart comes in, you just have no flushes in your range, and that means the best hand you can have is, what, top pair? And that's going to put you in a pretty bad spot. So a nice way to protect your range is to check call with your best flush draws, because those can actually win if it checks down. Because say we do check call the flop with the three, and it goes check, check on turn, check, check on river, and we miss, we still win sometimes, right? Same thing if we had, like, ace-jack of hearts. Same story. We win sometimes when it checks down. So with the absolute best draws, it's with showdown value, it's usually a good idea to check call. This time it goes check, check, though. Turns a queen of spades. Um, is this card good for hero or bad for hero? Well, when it goes check, check on the flop, the opponent should have a whole lot of overcards, and hero really just doesn't want an overcard. And the turn was an overcard. So hero should do a lot of checking, and again, probably just check call if the opponent bets. Hero checks, opponent bets 1,800 which is half pot. Uh, I do not think Hero should raise, because if he raises, what's he going to get called by, right? He's going to get called by only hands that crush him, and when the opponent folds, he's going to be folding out hands that were mostly behind, right? So obviously it'd be nice if you could make your opponent fold king-jack by check-raising, but 
that's not going to be the case all that often. In this scenario, we're going to be against a queen a lot. Or we're going to be against a bluff, like ace-jack maybe. Maybe a hand like jack-9 that just was giving up on the flop and turned, a draw, turned the open-ended straight draw. Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to come up with too many total garbage hands that would want to bet the turn. But anyway, here it beats a lot of those. And we're also getting good odds to call, right? In this scenario, a three is almost certainly good, and all the hearts are good, and the ace could very easily be good as well. So given we're getting three to one pot odds, here just needs to call. He does. Rivers and ace. Here now has top and bottom pair. Hero checks, and now the opponent bets 7,800 into the 7,000 pot. So a tiny overbet. Well, we have a few interesting things to consider here. First things first, we have two pair. Two pair is great. So we probably don't want to be folding this all that often because this is actually one of the best hands that we can have, right? I mean, I suppose we can have ace-10 and ace-7. Um, we, could have had, we could have had slow played pocket 10, 7s, or 3s, I guess. But you'd have to think we'd want to raise those at some point. Or maybe just even... Yeah, probably check raise turn or bet the, bet the turn. Um... So this is one of the best hands we have. So for that reason, we probably don't want to be folding it. Next, it went check, check on the flop. And the opponent's range, we already determined, should be a lot of overcards. One of them came on the turn, which is a good either value bet opportunity or bluff opportunity. If our opponent was value betting, well, now we only lose to ace-queen, but how many combinations of ace-queen are left, right? We block the ace, so there are two aces and three queens left. So there's only six combinations of um, ace-queen available, which is not very many. Our opponent could have had King Jack. That is a very, very likely hand our opponent would bet turn and would bet river with. However, if you think about our range, our range is pretty marginal in our opponent's eyes, right? We should have a lot of tens and a lot of queens. And a queen or a 10, maybe even a seven, should likely fold to this big river bet, right? So this is a spot where I think the opponent very easily could be bluffing. One thing I don't like is the fact that our opponent's strategy seems to be generally tight and straightforward due to their pre-flop raising stats. Obviously, I don't have a ton of hands on these players, but the fact that we see 15 slash 10 VPIP and pre-flop raise indicates a relatively tight, straightforward player who may or may not bluff in these spots. But I actually think it's possible for the opponent to be value betting here with worse. If the opponent has ace-king or ace-jack that just decided to bet the turn, um, well, they're going to bet the river. The question is how much would they bet? If they would bet all of their hands using the sizing, we just have an easy call. The problem is, is that our opponent may only bet the size with a very polarized range, which is you know, a good strategy. And if he's only doing it with a polarized range, it's kind of hard to come up with too many bluffs if he's playing 15 slash 10, right? Like, would he turn a hand like jack 10 into a bluff or queen jack? I mean, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense because he can just check those down and probably win, right? So this is, a, this is actually a rougher spot than I would think because we have one of our best hands and we're very very underrepresented and the queen and the ace are both good bluff cards which means our opponent should be induced to bluff in these spots but um i just never fold in these spots i suppose if you're playing against players who you know just only use over bets for value then um yeah you can fold because you're you're losing to most of the good value hands that said whenever your bluff catcher which is what we have here beats some of our opponent, your opponent's value bets, you pretty much just always have to call. And yeah, I do think it's kind of a stretch to say ace-king or ace-jack would play this way by overbetting the turn. I think we're going to be shown ace-queen or king-jack a lot, but I'm still not folding. This time, though, our hero did fold. So we don't even get to know if a uh, hero made a good fold or not, which is always a bummer. But I am... So I want to make it clear. I'm not calling here because I started with a flush draw and a pair on the flop. I'm calling here because this is one of the best hands we can have. It's very, very important to always disassociate yourself from your pre-flop hand strength or your flop hand strength or whatever and ask yourself, on this specific river, how do I fare? And lots of draws were available that missed. Also, the board ran out in a scenario where the opponent should be bluffing a lot with, with all their potential bluffs. Therefore, I think we need to call. If this somehow was a different scenario where the opponent had way, had um, many, many more value hands that we lose to, then I'd be a little bit more inclined to fold. But you're going to find very often when there's only a turn and a river bet, you really don't want to be looking to fold two pair. And I think our hero in this scenario probably got spooked by the big river bet of, of slightly over pot. But, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, across the board, people don't bluff often enough on the river in my experience. That said... 
don't fold your best hands. <laughs> That's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Weekly Poker Hand. If you did, tell your friends. Good luck in your games. Have fun. And enjoy yourselves. <laughs>